CC Silder. Wonder why I can't can't re hear hear the music. Okay, this this is puzzling. Okay. <clears throat> okay, now now we have a sound. Footfall is a bus of with rumors of a Xenox ravaging this sector. Is that snake venom seeping from your lips? We, the children of Azurian, are no strangers to the art of war. We are not raiders, or butchers, or least of all, fools. When a craft world is beset by calamity, its inhabitants do not start a war with every monkey in the sector. If you are looking for enemies, look for them elsewhere. It is a mystery as inscrutable as the sigh of the last immortal, as deep as the waters of a dark ocean. And I can tell you little, for I was far away Interesting. on a mission with my unit. We returned at the appointed hour, but we did not find Kruderak in its celestial harbor. He'll die, he'll die. It happened many turns ago, or standard years, as you say. But I remember that moment as if it happened this very day. The memory of a loss is always stronger than the memory of a gain. Especially when you lose something as significant as a home, or an entire world. So basically, Eldar have a really strong feelings. But she, she don't know how, how the craft world vanished. Interesting, that's so peculiar. We searched, we called out, we looked everywhere. But we saw only emptiness, and the echo of an echo of calamity. Countless days passed before I found myself on the Lilithon and met some of my kin. Those refugees who had barely managed to reach our ancestral planet. Their stories were far from being the fruit of truth I so badly craved. Those who agreed to talk to me were few. For most saw me as a wayward daughter who had spurned the honorable paths. And they would not stop babbling about a terrible disease that spread black tendrils of pain over the paths of the Infinity Circuit and deadened our world one segment after another. The ones who survived fled in fear and wandered between the stars until the Lilithon's warm light reached out to some of them. So, some kind of corruption. Some, like Muaran. Lay the blame entirely on Monkey. However, I do not know the truth, but I hope, oh, I desperately hope and pray to the gods that someday it will be revealed to me. Let's let's be a tourist. What's the Infinity Circuit? Is idle curiosity a defining feature of the Monkey, or are you trying to learn about the weaknesses of my people so you can destroy another world of the children of Asurion? Forgive me, Ellen Tark, but I am not ready to immerse you in the font of my people's deepest mysteries. Yes, that's a, that's a mystery. You are talking about something you cannot comprehend, Ellen Tark. Waystones are not mere trinkets worn by my people. They are something greater. From birth until the last breath, the spirit stone belongs only to its owner. Serving as an ever-present reminder that we are mortal. For it is the first refuge of the mind, and the last refuge of the soul. Which Cylon Thrash is so eager to devour. So, uh, elves have a... Eldar have a really crazy, crazy culture in, in for, the for the game. The souls of the children of Asurion move into the stones after yep. death. And then they become a part of the infinity circuit on a craft world. So they can serve their people even when the body is gone. There is no crime more despicable than harming a waystone and dooming the immortal soul of a child of a Surian to an eternity of torment in the maw of she who thirsts. 
We need waystones as desperately as darkness needs starlight, and monkey need air. And so we are bound to wander the galaxy in search of the old worlds that might give another craft world hope for existence. Each monkey's heart is one of your lives. Each waystone is the preserved soul of a child of a Surian. Kruderak cannot be described in your language. It can only be sung, encased in a filigree of sounds, a melody as complex and delicate as the Infinity Circuit, its energy network. It can be seen in the golden hues of sunlight, felt in the breath of celestial winds. Though it was an artificial world, it was just as alive as any real planet. But I must see clearly, not only light, but also shadows. I yearn to remember only Kruderak's beauty, but it had a dark side too. My world was isolated for too long. Like a lake of stagnant water, there was no movement or renewal, and even the sweetest outbursts of life soon turned fetid. Who knows? <sighs> Who knows? Had there been no stagnation? Had our elders not been so blind in their dogmatism and our youths not lacking in courage, then perhaps... Kruderak would still be alive even now? I am afraid your life is too fleeting and your memory too feeble to encompass the entirety of my knowledge. My people ruled the stars when yours did not even have a name. But many of our songs and stories were lost, stolen by she who thirsts. I can tell you the children of Asurion lived, created, caressed the stars as if they were pearls on a string, until Cylon Thresh smothered our empire in her terrifying embrace. Different branches of the Eldari chose different paths to salvation. My ancestors chose an eternal journey through the starry void, living on craft worlds instead of real planets. We rescued countless wonders from the days before, but far from all. You saw this on the Lily then. Not even we can always master the gates our ancient ones built. This is the story of the Asuriani. There are branches that chose a different path, gruesome and frightening. But I do not wish to tell you about them. That is our dark side, just as your kin have many dark sides of their own. So certain certain Eldar began to worship uh, Slanes and, and they are dark Eldar. <clears throat> so in, even, even the 40k you have a like dark and dark Eldar and your vanilla Eldar. Why ask this question? Is it idle curiosity, or something else? Do not turn your thoughts towards Cylon Thresh, whatever your motive. She is downfall. She is hunger. She is the enemy of all that is good in the universe. She is an enemy to the Eldari, and I hope to you as well. Chaos cards are enemies of the Imperium, which means they are my enemies. You can be sure of that. We are as different as starlight and its reflection in a muddy puddle. But we share a common enemy. Constancy is our strength. As you wish, Elontark. <laughs> I'm still uh, on the verge of discussing your world and <laughs> your kid. What do you think is happening on Chen's right now? The Lilithon is purifying herself of the corruption brought by the servants of Cylon Thresh. Gardens and birds, animals and people. Many are gone forever, and even more are corrupted beyond healing. But the Lilithon is stronger. This world will live. My kin are probably still looking for a means to enter the webway. May the Lilithon spirit aid them in this endeavor. Beyond the gate lies salvation, and perhaps even knowledge about the fate of Kruderak and the remaining survivors. Hmm. 
The outcasts my path led me to had a saying. Let me translate it for you. If you fall off a cliff, grab the roots and do not ask if they belong to a weed or a noble rosebush. You are the root I grabbed, Elantak. Because I fell off a cliff. My homeworld is gone. My kin are either dead, or hiding no one knows where. By joining forces with you, I may be able to nurture a seedling of the truth I so deeply yearn for. All right. So let's let's visit our own room. Okay. This this heal, heals our wound, and we need to find a um, forge world. Well, not forge world, manufacturing world. Yeah, clo close enough. So that's that's our ne next call. Lots of discussion in, uh, and uh, dialogue in this game. Okay, that's the wrong button. Always takes a lot, lot of time to re re um, listen to dialogue in this game. And some, some important seem to be voice acted. Which is great, but not totally, not ev everything, which is sad. So, uh, back to bridge. Budget management is here. Uh, I think we have a... Do not have anything special? Here. So now we need to start sailing once again. For sale of prophecy. Microme. Timber Scourge sounds fine. Some, somewhere around here should be like our planets. Lots of uncharted systems, but we, we can all, all, only go to the uh, certain systems. So we are going to scan the place, loot them, anything, shoot the enemies, and continue. Uh, Lord Captain evokes systems in the distress signal coming from the Imperial vessel. Planetary beat of Dragonus, capital of one balance is dynasty. The transmission is repeated. The message itself is corrupted. Re cacophony of requests for help, groans, and shouts. What in the world? It is your name that they are shouting, Lord Captain. Uh, okay. Interesting. Let's, let's loot everything. <laughs> So that's that's just a rock. Blast deal. So we have some beer. We, we are already getting a lot of blast deal. So I, I need I need to find something something else. Or the other items. Okay, let's check the cursed derelict. So it sounds really Okay, this seems safe. Yeah. 
Is there money to be made? Hey, John, I'm you don't. Your arrogance will be <laughs> your downfall. Ninety five percent chance, and she missed. Let's shoot, shoot a bit more. Commands, I Four points. Oh no. Who, if not me? Okay, these are mutating, and they are tough cookies. Cost of that. Force flow yeah. slam. Oh My no. Ears are ringing. Reduce to dust. Yep, a bit, a bit of plasma. Always keep your eye on the price. Navigator's throne. The leader of the ravaged ship. Crew wipes the sweat. He's probing a motor characters to navigate there. Not with his whole hand, but two fingers moving left to right. So not as uh, touch his third eye by accident. So navigators have a third eye right here. <laughs> My lead is your lordship. There's no need for interaction. No, the hairs von Malansi's line by side. I'm Han of Lahos Kasani, the navigator on this vessel. Senior surviving officer have assumed command after the incident. <laughs> you have all been dated by chairs. What happened to the ship and crew? This ship is assigned to port to Dragonus. Some time ago the captain was instructed to deliver a package urgently by hand. The we were even shown picked off your face. The disaster truck during the warp jump. We, I will never know all the details as I was preoccupied with my primary duties. Package contain a chaos artifact, chaos bomb, if you will. She was in distress and would have, have almost certainly destroyed had I not resorted to making an emergency exit from the warp. People you see here are only some survivors. So the case bomb package was meant for me. Who's the sender? Kunrad Vogtir, Master of Whispers of Rock Traders Retinue. Well, of course. Blasted Trader. I had to almost convince myself that Rogue Trader was deliberately collecting case artifacts. Do not dare to exceed your colluding with chaos. Do not even success it. Beg your pardon. Too tired to speak diplomatically. However, the sender wanted to all this to happen in, in, to your ship, not ours. Where you not? Where's the artifact? I have placed it inside protective sarcophagus. I can always attack him. Okay. Once we are off the ship, I will absolutely find a way to destroy the wild thing. Uh, we could lay the mines in uh, what remains of the ship and blast it along the artifact from safe distance. What about me and crew? Will you take with us with, with us? You can come with me, but remains out of the crew to will be terminated. Yeah, because he's he's mutant already. Or navigators are mutants. That would be like interesting. It's this is not like dogmatic choices here to kill all, all those, but. Oh, 
Okay, so we could take the mutant with us. I'm just gathering the iconoclast points here. Peteldar is on the fall mood. Difficult conversation. Yeah, the Eldari do not like Borb at all. Please spare me a brief moment of your time, Elantak. Azurion knows that I do not care about the curious glances of Monkey. I grew inured to them back in the blossoming gardens of the Lilithon. They curse me from afar. They follow my every move. They ward themselves against me. Let them. After all, what can be done with such weak-minded, primitive creatures? And still... One monkey stunt has caused the cup of my patience to spill over. She dare to approach me, to speak to me, and touching my hand, she... she suggested that we withdraw somewhere private. She wanted... wanted... Kimura. The mere memory of it stirs up a tempest in my soul. I wouldn't mi mind going somewhere private with you either. Mm, yep. Yeah. Mm, okay, no. No. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. My people have behaved contemplatively, and I apologize for it. I accept your words, Ellen Tark. And still, try to imagine Ellen Tark being lusted after by a wild beast. It is foul, disgusting, so vile that it makes your very soul shudder. <laughs> So I don't have a chance either then. <laughs> oh no. Ah! <laughs> I'm also repelled by the thought of human desiring the elder. Okay, let's be diplomatic here. Okay, um. I understand this incident was uh, unpleasant for you, but it does not mean all humans are animals. Fuck you, I'm not willing to be a wild animal on those help it. <laughs> bad, bad, bad flirting here. No. Your kind, simple souls and narrow minds are the root of all these flaws. Okay. Narrow minds and simple souls. Every day, I feel as if I am caught in a trap. Surrounded by a pack of wild animals. I am prepared to pay this price to find my kin. But everything has its limit. You fully understand human thoughts and actions. It will take time, but I can help you make sense of them. Ah, mm. uh, wrong. Ah, uh, I pressed the wrong button. The truth. I will have to remember that. I pressed the first. Okay, that that was okay. Okay, let. I press. have walked the path of awakening, Ellen Tark, and learned to see that which is hidden, and hear that which is unspoken. When I found myself on the Lilithon. I watched your kind long enough to understand the true nature of Monkey. I do not think you can tell me anything I do not already know. <sighs> Nevertheless, I will not protest. Conversations with you are the only thing on this ship that can ease my solitude. Some of these times you struggle to understand what is behind our own actions. It was emotions. That once brought down my kind, Ellen Tuck. Yep. 
toppling us from our pedestal as rulers of the galaxy. Indulging your weaknesses or whims does not make your species any more attractive. Well, Xeno is strange and unknown creature, and humans try to understand the unknown for the unknown is most frightening thing at all. Of all. Had any of them wished to understand my nature, they would have already run away in fear from one who walks the path of the outcast. But they are just trying to provoke me, hurt me. No, monkey are driven by their instincts to survive, to breed, to ensure the preservation of their species and the annihilation of those who threaten them. It is neither good nor bad. It simply is. Um, okay, that, that's neutral stance. <clears throat> All humans are different. My people interest you in was not interested to be an insult. Elantark, please understand that I do not find Monkey attractive. The mere thought of being intimate with one of your kind. <sighs> Our conversation has only proved my point, Elantark. That monkey and the children of Azurian are as different as night and day. Eldari do not simply see the world differently. They see more than any monkey can ever comprehend. And what do you see in the world around us that I do not? What do I see? Your words ring with the desire to know the soul of another. But will you be able to comprehend my answer? Hmm. I will need time a spark. to put the, you the romance. truth of this world into the meager language to which your ears are accustomed. When I find my answer, I will pay you a visit. Steam, steam achievement. Okay, now we are in a romance. Maybe my character is more interested in somebody, somebody else. Hello, Jay. May the Exalted One protect you. Have you grown bored with our little talk, Sherin? No truer words have ever been said. I'm far more exciting than some small-time peddlers from Footfall. Allow me to introduce myself properly. I am Jai Amira Fatkhain Tamiri Ash Ifrit, the twelfth daughter of the Lord of Ifrit, a distant world at the fringes of the Imperium. Okay. The youngest child is destined to become a bargaining chip in the family's political games. But I was unwilling to accept such a fate, and wanted to choose what to become and which path to follow. When I learned the Exalted One watches over hundreds of other worlds amidst distant stars, I understood there was an entire world of opportunities beyond Ifrit. All I had to do was break the familial bonds tying me down and escape the planet. Which I did a long time ago. Well, 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 we'll see, see it gets stuff done. <laughs> the Caronis Expanse. A gorgeous name, isn't it? But this backwater wasn't my original destination when I escaped, Sherry. Oh no, it was the rumors of incredible freedom that brought me to the Coronis Expanse. Freedom that is generously bestowed upon everyone who can survive in these parts. All doors are open here. You can become a saint, a mogul, a kingmaker, or anyone you like, really. Here, hard work pays off. Unless you're used to lying by the roadside and complaining instead of toiling for the good of your soul, glory, wallet, or whatever floats your boat. I'm used to working hard, and so I found my blessing. I convinced my father I personally wished to oversee the inspection of imported goods. I had to get experience so I wouldn't bring shame on our family, didn't I? I made friends with traders, missionaries, and soldiers at the port. I listened to their stories, studied the charts, learned what documents I had to forge to escape the planet. A kind word here, a shiny coin there, and here I am in the iron belly of a ship, braving the void in search of a new life. Consider it a mark of my trade. This year, Xenos, dumb-headed orcs. 
Who knew that Orcs. we weren't the only ones to get tempted by the wreck of that raider? As for this treasure, I received it as a reward for a life that had been just a little too good. I was in a hurry to get to the Adeptus Amasakis after the Exalted One blessed me with immense wealth. I was two back streets away from the den when a pathetic Ashmag attacked me, envious of somebody else's fortune. Where only one part of Massive Augment is replacing the internal organs. So that's why she can drink so much. So, okay, she, she uh, battled with the orcs. Interesting. All relationships are based on mutual trust. That goes for business too. The dark side is the real Karonis expanse, if you ask me. But what do you want to know about it, Shireen? Dennis the heirs drink with criminals. Rogue traders strike deals with the Caspalica. And dozens of ships stop off for a welcome break from a long voyage. Is there a more beautiful place in the entire Imperium? The Emperor is merciful to the meek and the powerful alike. There's a job for everyone as long as they have a head on their shoulders. And if you feel like talking to him in person, the statue of the Exalted One can be seen from any asteroid. You can pray to your heart's content. An ancient crime cartel that originated with the first settlers of the Calixis sector. It is run by shadowy clans with robber barons at the helm. Cross their path, and you risk making enemies all over the Caronis expanse, or even the entire Imperium. As for the agents, they are just shameless, greedy scum. Every third person on Footfall is a Caspalican. But that doesn't mean all that rotten filth is acting together. I've been set up more than once just so some Caspalican can get one over on his rivals. And yet, the Caspalica is generous to its customers. If you can afford it. Anything can be obtained, organized, and transported for the right price. The customer is always right. Unless they happen to be a rat. In which case... Okay, so she's... She's using the lo uh, lower aquatic birds. What gave you such an outrageous idea? Was it my immaculate garment? My gorgeous jewelry? Do not worry, Shireen. I will let you know once I become a baroness, should the Exalted One will it. Just imagine the strong and fruitful alliance that could be forged between a rogue trader and a mastermind of the Kasbalika. It's not hard to do on footfall. I spent a year working for good old Christo. He was a brave soldier who gave up the ghost in the scuffle with orcs, and then took over his business. Having a good head on your shoulders and keeping the Exalted One in your heart helps to establish new contacts quickly. Eventually, I gathered together a group of honest and loyal people, and it only took a few successful contracts for the Caspalica to take notice. I quickly settled on footfall and started dispensing my wisdom to my protégés and subordinates. I lost the taste for getting my hands dirty. It really is simple, Sherry. The Kasbalika runs the Imperium's black market, offering special goods to those who can afford their services. Yes, I am talking about Xeno artifacts too. Alien weapons, technology, sometimes even certain kinds of living creatures. Unlike the rogue traders whose sacred warrants make them immune even from the laws of the Exalted One, Kasbalikan agents are used to hiding and covering their tracks. Nobody wants to draw unwanted attention, no matter who might take an interest. Especially now that the Coronis Expanse has a warrior of the Golden Throne as its watchman. Why not? The decision is yours, Sherry. My trade means knowing the right people and non-people. Having the right connections and making sure the precious goods find their way into the hands of my no less precious customers. My wisdom includes the knowledge of the enemies of humankind, be they Xenos or the lowest scum of the Imperium. As well as the latest knowledge about how they charge for any particular curio at the footfall market. Not even the most cunning Arji will deceive you as long as I am with you, Sherin. I promise you that. 
Whatever I have can be yours too. If your unfathomable wealth isn't enough for you already, I mean. You're fun to talk. I grew tired of scribing endless contracts and agreements, neatly tucked away on footfall. I did that for how many years? But here, among the stars, you are always balanced on a knife edge. Nothing thrills me more than the tension of a warp jump, or the danger that lurks around every corner on a planet. Footfall was beginning to make me fat and stupid, Sherin. I do not want that. She's uh, afraid of something. What about your gang that stayed back at Footfall to retrust them? Do I trust the trickster twins? By the exalted one, no. The underhanded rogues of Footfall came up with that name for a reason. The tricks of those frenzied Ashmags are all about things far more intriguing than the honest and law-abiding subjects of the Imperium can imagine. On the other hand, this is why I am keeping them close. Kor and Tora know who lifted them out of the cesspit proudly called the Shadow Quarters, and who has been feeding that ravenous beast their insatiable lust for lucre. No, they are not going to betray me if only because they know I am now a part of your entourage, Sherin. They are not going to let the biggest pie in the Imperium pass them by without trying to get a slice for themselves. Mm. Yeah, that, that doesn't, doesn't really comfort Vicious, me. Cruel, Dangerous beasts. Humans hold little interest for Xenos. We are entertainment for them, a means to keep boredom at bay, a commodity. But some of them contact us once in a while using their own people. Do not deceive yourself by thinking you are safe because there are no Xenos in sight. Those Aji are as cunning as they are ruthless. They cleverly pull at the strings of spies and traitors, subjugate those who do not fall for the promised reward transform the ones who resist their promises into soulless puppets. The Emperor watches over me, and that is why I still haven't succumbed to the fate of many of my associates who have lost their lives to the stringy scoundrels. It Enemies of humanity. To happen. After years of dealing with Xenos, I've learned their customs, and even got a grasp of their language. Except they cringe whenever I start speaking, arrogant sods. They dislike even our voices, but they never turn away our valuables. Then again, I'm used to seeing sour faces. In this trade, the easily offended go out of business. I have no doubt you will have to deal with Xenos sooner or later. When that time comes, Sherin, you will thank the Exalted One for sending me to stand at your side. Compared to the rabble on Footfall, perhaps? Compared to you, be it power or money, I still have a long way to go. I could purchase one of Footfall's asteroids, but not a planet. I could subjugate a few gangs from the shady districts, but not Vladaya. And so the answer to your question is no. I do not consider myself rich. I am not rich enough. <laughs> not not rich enough. You have many talents. Thank you, Sherry. Being able to read and write is chief among them. You may not be aware. But this science is beyond the abilities of billions of the Imperium subjects. And yet they happily keep drudging along in their factories, fundi, and assembly lines. Me? I didn't escape Ifrit to consign myself to such misery. It was literacy that paved my path to copied orders, forged signatures, counterfeited papers. The wonderful things that make the wheels of bureaucracy turn in the right direction. I think we've said all there is to say on this topic. It is difficult not to be aware of the powers that be, especially ones like Lord Captain Theodora. But we never met personally, as the difference between our positions was far too great. Theodora was a mighty ruler, the center of her own universe. And I, a pathetic commoner, was nothing next to her. But you were kind to me, Sherin. 
And in my eyes, that puts you above your esteemed aunt, or whoever she was to you. Argenta? What could be more beautiful than the sight of a sister of battle, whose mere presence casts light in the dark corners of lost souls such as mine? But, alas, what remains of my sanity is telling me that poor Jai can only admire the radiance of this angel, forsaking any hope of ever touching her wings. <laughs> ah, okay. <laughs> um, well, she, she's interesting, interested. Or lucky lady, you mean? My heart has been coveted by proud men with hard eyes, gentle maidens with sensual voices, imperious lords and fierce leaders of void brigands. Only rogue traders have not yet featured among Jai Hedari's intimate friends. Why do you ask, Sherry? <laughs> I need to know all about Kilturin myself for arrival. <clears throat> With a few words, you have managed to make my heart flutter like a songbird caught in the snare of a skilled hunter. You enjoy being with me. Perhaps you even find me... amusing? Every girl dreams of hearing that she will make a fine toy and a worthy diversion. <laughs> Play for irony. Perhaps I shall grant you that I don't understand me as my nightly delight. I don't see you as a toy, just like you. I understand. I'm just having a little fun, Sherin. I can't possibly just say, Oh, I like you too. Words as dry and dull as a voidsman's dinner. They are unworthy of us. If you are not simply amusing yourself by toying with my feelings, then why not give it a try? Go on. Or wait. You haven't yet asked how I feel about being your romantic partner. Ask soon, Sherin. <laughs> You're giving me orders. Um, ask meekly. Drop to one knee. My dashing one cannot trust you to hold your heart at the smallest drop of regard of me. For I me. I simply cannot reject so ardent <laughs> an admirer. Okay. To insult such sincere passion would be a wicked act in the eyes of the Exalted One. I mean, I think you to dinner. I have no doubt that you are a wonderful conversationalist, Sherin. I will make a note of your invitation and make sure to take you up on it when I next get hungry. But if the feelings in your soul have become a fire that is burning you up from within, then you may express them by bestowing a gift upon your humble servant. Okay, she, she wants a gift. Oh. So, qu quests. Uh, company quests. Her errand. Uh, okay, so we need a gift for her. Uh, he might not know. What gift do you think I could give Jay? Sacrilegious, she has committed against the Omnissiah. 
It would be a most generous gift. However, this act of mercy is not advisable, for it is undeserved. Okay. Uh, strange messages have been appearing in this What do you know about this error? This statement is true. Algorithmic violations have been recorded. As a result of which, I twice performed an offering to the cogitators of corrective data vows and ruled out the possibility of sabotage. I hypothesize that the violation is a consequence of the discontent of the ship's machine spirits. I recommend a procedure of location of the honored spirits for the glory of the Omnissiah and the steel angels sent by him. May your labors be effective. And fruitful. Okay. Interesting. Okay, that's a that's a guy who we we saved. What kind of gift could I give to Jay? What do you think? <laughs> Well, it would have to be something that screams. Look how much the rogue trader loves me in the faces of everyone she meets. Like a fabulous gown beyond anything that even the noble women of Dargonis can acquire. A princess of smugglers would love the opportunity to rub the nobility's noses in her newfound privileges. You seem to have a very strong reaction to what Argenta said by the broken lens. It was just my nerves playing up. Something about our little saint doesn't sit right with me, and I trust my gut. Oh sure, she seems straight as an arrow and as predictable as a hangover after drinking. But when I look at her, something about her makes my brain itch. After that conversation, I tried to listen to what was being said about her. Beyond the door, what I heard was strange. Blood in her past, twilight in her present, and something like a star leading her? But where is it leading her? I saw several roads, and all of them frightened me. Interesting. If I knew, I would have told you. Hearing things clearly requires cooperation from the other person you know. But that cobra just hisses and spits its venom at me. I don't trust her one bit. We should make a... Um... I stand to expert the disturbing news for me is the massive spirit of the sea. Matter is a delegate and concerns Lady Cassia. Deliver rep your report. Lady Navigator cast as one of the ship runners, after which he went to his living quarters, killed his family and shot himself. Okay, so uh, Lady Navigator gave the pilots the wrong instructions and the warship was thrown, of course, for a matter of minutes. After that, officers living near Lady Navigator's quarters began to express exp extreme emotions. Oh no. So this happens when <laughs> the Navigator fails. Okay, so unsafe route is really unsafe. <clears throat> I suppose we ro rolled badly. So I need, not need, to, need to go to talk with her. Uh, that way. Words cannot 
describe how boring the bridge is without having I have heard rumors that you are not getting along well with the crew. Okay. She freaked out. Not here. I'm begging you. Aren't noblemen supposed to discuss such things away from the servants? Let's go to my study. Then lead the way, and I will answer all of your questions. I have nothing to say to hunt for the accusation about conflicts with the crew. The messenger who rebuked butchered his own family and then killed himself. I think I remember. I grew tired of the disgusting color and advised him to lighten his burden by casting the weight of these shoulders. He did not come the next day or ever again. During the warp voyage, you gave wrong orders. Something, something in warp, something vast predatory. Decided to change the course while it was still possible, but did not want to show so panic. It have been better to tell the crew we were heading straight into monsters caving more. Cannot control my abilities. Do you mind telling me where, why you needed 100 species of bird? I'm lost myself. Today we are food for our center's request. The ship's quartermaster asked him to get me a songbird. So excited. Then I became afraid and they fell o over dead. I do not think to keep pets anymore. Okay, let's be kind f for her. You have kind soul, but I have difficulty reaching out to people. I could teach you out of communication if you like. Be wonderful. You are the most worthy interlocutor on the entire ship. You are always so busy. What do you like? What do you like to ask? I read a treatise by Passius the Mobius very recently, who came that. Subject would never believe the new ruler was better than the old one unless the old one had been tyrant. No matter circumstances, Lombard and Rabble became deluded about prospect and rebel and favor their base desires. What do you make of that? Or Imperium, your interpretation of classical text is not entirely correct. Uh, if the subjects have grown accustomed to the ruling house, sovereign must do is refrain from preaching long-standing traditions. Just unwanted laws, gradually as you would shift the bed of the flooded river. No one will, will ever take the, your power from you. Indeed. According to the 20 tomes spent by the preacher, the forgotten mercy and cruelty go through the world hand to hand, but people flock to only one pan of the scales. Would you rather inspire fear on in your followers or be magnanimous and cause awe? One must be a tyrant friend and a jester to one's subject. This is how I've been actually playing the game. What matters is that uh, to clearly discern what the role is required at a given moment. There's somewhat power in your words, power that makes me want to join you. I understand why your subjects are eager to follow you. 
I first be aware to Trinity and yet you helped me realize. I keep on candid with you. Please do continue. Sometimes I can hardly bear the burden the house has placed upon me. I feel I'm not doing my best, but how you here of the protectorate can bear the responsibility for billions of lives day after day and not stoop under the other weight. Well, my character hasn't been like rogue trader for long, but he has been like imperial guard general, which is like very, very, very high standing basically. It's always easy, but I thought it was a dynasty towards prosperity by worthy means. Okay, apparently bad things can happen if the navigator of the ship is free, uh, is going to freak out. Okay, this is dangerous route. Slightly less dangerous. Okay, that's uh, one Valencius planet. We know we know that's there. Okay. Interesting. So let's visit visit this planetary system while we are at it. More space looks okay pirates. Freak it. Okay. Okay, it's going to shoot. With the force of a supernova. Make every shot count. Keep up the pressure. Coordinate set. Macro cannons, open fire. So if we swing here, can we shoot those torpedoes? Uh, let's see. One, two, three. One, two, three. So one, two, three. I think it's it would be like uh, from the. Okay. Apparently, I can't engage the engines. Can't make a tighter turn.
Helmsman, take us in. No, okay, not that one. Oh, okay. Swing run. Just out of the reach. Lance batteries. Fully. On, only one. Let the void sort them out. Salvo. But they are damaged shields. So that that helps. That once again making a mistake. Emergency warp jump. Make every they are, shot they are trying, trying to escape. Nothing. Blessed are the faithful. Okay, Yurilet has uh, problems once again. You posed a question with me not long ago. Then listen closely my answer. You may struggle to comprehend, but it is it, it is it to be said. Being accustomed to revealing your might, skewing the world to suit yourself. Which you understand not toward my words, but the sense that lies hidden, the shade of their sounds. You try to split the world into pieces to fragment it into light, dark, truth and lies, self and other. But I see the world as a single whole and in this lies its simplicity and complexity. It's not enough simply to see the world and hear its voices, you must understand it. Think of Lilith and the world which our past past crossed. What is it truly? What's essence? The little magnificence comes not, not from the green, the vast forests, or from the trap depths of its waters. It breathes be these, the word. It way it dances down the dawn. And even to an attack can see it, sense it. So I say the word, slowly, delicately, casting aside all straight of feel, perhaps then you will see. Do you mind to speak the word? Lilatat. Lilatat. I don't think I'm beating it to understand. Your words are sincere, then you are capable of seeing more than you do now. Instead of lifeless glamour, monstrous mechanism, the roar of engines and discordant voices of your followers. I hear and attend to silence. There are moments to your spiritual serenity and its stillness we become witnesses to the transformations of our own inner world. 
Monkey lives pass so swiftly. You rush through them for the sake of the closing goal. Uh, thank you for following uh, Queen Dreams. But it's from fleeting the moments which enter our lives and quickly vanish from them. That the soul's fortress grows, the blue moments blooming and hours building. The splendor of each lies in its ephemerality. So do the memories of those who have left our side and no longer walk up the path with us. You in, in you, Elantag, I see more, much more than just a monkey. You through essence lies your will. It's capable of changing the world around you and within you. It lies in your ability to create, to understand your, your creation and your ability to destroy. It lies in your queen's minds cannot grasp and th what their primitive sight cannot behold, but I can see it. I never expected to hear you say such things in reference to me. I'm seeking the truth and attack. However, I ask you not to make the mistake typical of your kind. My words contain no insinuation, nor any call to your to act. Your soul shines brightly in this world. I see you and this new will never change. That's all. Thank you. And what do you make of it? How different do you see the world? Let's also see there's something greater in the world around me, something deeper than the outer guise of things. This world of endless war, permanent on beacon of hope and this garden better. They try to turn my attention, but it delays my ears and my eyes. Musical wealth, power, of course. See, also see something greater in the world around me. <laughs> I'm especially drawn to imperfection destruction. Okay, that's also see the suffering of those around me. See the uniqueness of every creature, everything, and it pleases me. I can follow the line of their thoughts and attack. Every form, color, creature, thing possesses its own charm and capacity to steer out our emotions. Millions of stars. In the darkness, the immutability of void crystals, plethora of intelligent and primitive life forms that inhabit the galaxy. The world manifests itself in endless diversity, and in that lies its true magnificence. Not, not that have we have shared the all truth about this world. I would like to know your th thoughts about me align with those of your kin, Elantak. Or if, if you see me differently. To me, you, you are foreign and yet beguiling world. I hope that one day I will come to know you. And on that, that day my own world will become much deeper. Seems that there are many facts of your soul that I have not considered Elantak. Interesting. I accept your answer and think, thank you for speaking with me. First conversation on the board of this vessel that has truly brought serenity and joy to my soul. Somebody and understand her. Yes. So, okay, so for former captain, or rather, rogue trader has been seen on, the, or her ghost has been seen on the lower decks. Okay. Come on, management. There's 
conflict between the followers of Order of Hammer and refugees from the Winter Scale dynasty. Sephas to the thief. What's Nicodemus and Philip? What's the issue here? Missionary Los Santo founders of Homer Order of Hammer. It's the valuable goddess collision as in Fallstone. Converted many words to the Imperial Creed. Most famous feast was his search for the burial sites of legendary features at Cognatis. Who conquered the expanse thousands of years ago, leaving behind scores of relics. Sepp of the track some of the relics, though was named after Power Hammer of Saint Cognatius, Pius Charge. Let them bring forth their representation and try to negotiate some form of coexistence. That would be like... I'm going to wash my hands up from this. Okay, we can improve our colony. <laughs> 